<laughs> Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a car that I have been itching to drive for the longest time. It's the BMW M2 competition. And well, it's just a riot. What they basically did to achieve this M2 is take everything we love about a good M car and put it in a smaller, slightly more accessible package. But then because it's the competition version, they dialed it up just a little bit again. So what you have then is a relatively diminutive sports car with a 410 horsepower straight six. 410! So now that I have it in docile mode, let me just tell you what it's like really quickly to live with in docile mode. Because let's be honest, if you live in India, chances are you'll spend a lot of time in your car doing mundane everyday things. You'd only really get to explore the limits every once in a while. And well, compared to a normal BMW luxury sedan, for instance, it is a little bit firmer. Of course, the steering is a little bit heavier, but that's only to be expected. And it's all within an acceptable limit. And yes, it's a little bit wider than you might expect at first, especially at the rear. But overall, it's still a very compact car. So you get used to driving it in traffic, for instance, in no time. It's got a pair of tiny back seats, which are best for occasional use only or for kids. And it's got a reasonably sized boot, which is currently filled with spare tire. And it's got these huge bucket seats that I absolutely love. These wing things by your shoulders give you really great support in the corners. And of course, they're electrically adjustable. That aside, the cabin is also quite luxurious, but you can tell that this is a slightly dated BMW in the bigger scheme of things because the design is of the last generation, the outgoing generation of BMWs. The trim is all black with only a few contrast stitched embellishments to liven it up. It's got the characteristic M car thick rim steering wheel with big barrels peeking out from behind it and customizable M switches to store your favorite settings. Yup, you can independently customize the engine ferocity, gearbox ferocity and steering weight, but not the suspension. And don't you just love the stubby old school M gear selector which has been around since the E60 V10 powered M5. And while it might not be as quiet as a 330i, I'm sure you'll agree it's pretty silent now that I have it in comfort and efficiency modes. Speaking of efficiency, if you aren't driving like a maniac, you can get a pretty decent cruising range out of the M2 competition. It's even super composed sitting at three digit speeds out on the highway. But what other practical considerations do you have to make? The ground clearance. This is a sports coupe, so it's not excellent, but it is still pretty decent. But the better news is that because this car has such a short wheelbase, you won't scrape it on speed bumps as much as you might think. All things you gotta consider when buying one of these. But one of the biggest things you gotta consider is the price because while all the other M cars cost well north of a crore of rupees, this one costs less than 90 lakh rupees. And with 410 horsepower, that is a lot of bang for your buck. Right, sensible considerations out of the way. Let's show you what this thing can do. Back up into Sport Plus, gearbox at its most ferocious setting. Let's dance. <laughs> the three liter twin turbo straight six engine has been lifted straight out of an M3 and shoehorned into this tiny little car with only a mild detune. And because the M2 is so petite, the power to weight ratio, about 250 horsepower per ton, is almost the same as its bigger sibling. Now that this car has a phenomenal amount of power for its size, there is no question. You can nurse it around the bottom end till about 3000 RPM, but once you fly past that, it just takes off. Strapped to our testing gear, the M2 demolished the 0 to 100 kph sprint in just 4.38 seconds and cracked 200 in just 14.46 seconds. Hardly what you'd call a junior sports car now, is it? Now when you keep your foot in, it keeps building power all the way to the red line, which is nearly 7,000 RPM. 
But here's where you start to see the competition part of this car's name come into play. If you should be so bold as to put it in Sport Plus mode, you better be committed. You cannot take half measures in Sport Plus mode with this car because it will goad you on and say, what are you made of? Push harder, push harder. It's straining at the leash and threatening to bite you back at every corner. You just have to pop a brave pill and go for it. The other thing about this car is the grip. Because it's so short and so wide, it's got a practically square stance of the road. But if you're willing to push hard enough, you'll find that someone even as ham-fisted as me can get the tail to step out, if just a little bit. With all that power in a, well, relatively manageable package, it's truly, genuinely a laugh-a-minute sports car that will plaster a big, idiotic grin across your face. But it's not perfect. Things I'm not such a fan of, the steering. While it is really quick, well-weighted and precise, it just lacks that fingertip feel that you used to get from older BMWs and I wish it had that. And then there's the sound. It is aggressive and it sounds good, but it's not great. And while we're on the subject of aggression, allow me to pull over to the side of the road because I have a bone to pick. The thing about sports cars or even sports coupes like this one is that they don't just have to drive well, they also have to look good to justify the price you're paying for them. And that's the problem I have with a lot of modern M cars. You see, they just don't look different enough from their regular diesel-powered counterparts. But not this one. You see, the 2 Series on which it's based is a very handsome looking car, but with the M2 competition, they've dialed the aggression up to 11. I said before that it has a square footprint on the road, and I wasn't kidding. It looks so wide for a car that's ultimately quite small. The M addenda are all there. Aggressive intakes in the bumper, a gloss black grille, bulges in the bonnet, aero-efficient wing mirrors, and 19-inch wheels. At the back, there's the ultimate M signature, quad tailpipes, which poke out from a rather um, low-hanging transverse-mounted can. But no, what really does it for me are those hips, those flared rear wheel arches that signify a widened track and more serious performance intent. Subtle? Oh, hell no. Now usually, to bridge the gap between its mainstream models, for example a 330i, and its high-performance models, for example an M3, a luxury car maker would introduce a mid-performance model, which in this case should have been the M340i. But BMW didn't launch that car, it launched this M2 competition instead. And I'm glad that's what they did, because this is an altogether more focused performance car. In fact, the performance and driving pleasure it offers, I think, is right up there very close to an M3 or an M4. Okay, at this price, there are rivals that do some things better than this car does. However, if you were in the market for an M3 or an M4, I would highly recommend considering one of these first.